New at 11, a new program in one Tennessee County is aiming to keep kids out of the foster care system. How it's preparing parents to be able to reunite with their children again. Plus, one Kentucky couple is calling for change after a prank call from an unknown caller led police officers to their home. What law enforcement is saying about swatting. And East Tennesseans had the chance to listen to a performance that incorporates sounds from nature. Stick around to hear the unique tunes. 10 News is brought to you in high definition exclusively by Toyota and Lexus of Knoxville. WBIR 10 News starts now. Breaking tonight, one person is in the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries after an officer-involved shooting in Morgan County. This is a photo from the scene. The TBI says Morgan and Roan County deputies responded to a call late this afternoon on Coal Hill Road that a man had a gun. They say when they arrived, a standoff started between the deputies and 22-year-old Paul Crass. The TBI says at some point, Crass fired his gun and deputies then shot back and hit him. Authorities say no deputies were hurt and the TBI is now investigating. New tonight, authorities are investigating after human remains were found in Roan County. Roan County sheriffs say they were found on Wednesday by a passerby, and the preliminary investigation shows the remains could potentially belong to a missing person out of Knox County. The Knox County Major Crimes Unit is investigating. Today, congregations across Knoxville came together to pray after another teenage death. Five current or recent Austin East students have now died after being shot in the past three months. Faith leaders called for an end to all the violence. All we can do at best is to attempt to encourage ourselves to keep going on. There will be another citywide prayer service on Tuesday. This time it'll be held at Payne Avenue Missionary Baptist Church. Another group of people gathered to rally around the youth of East Knoxville. The event was in Chilhowee Park today. Organizers of the event spoke out about giving children who have been affected most by the recent violence the chance to vocalize their concerns. Right now online, we have a list of organizations focused on ending violence and helping young people in Knoxville. You can learn more about those nonprofits, how to donate, and other ways to help. That's all on WBIR.com. We're going to turn head to the forecast now. This is a live look at Market Square. A pretty quiet night out there. Cassie Nall, is, are things going to stay quiet overnight? In Kentucky, one person is dead and two other are missing after a boat accident on the Ohio River. Officials say it happened last night after 10. Crews were called to the Greenwood Dock boat dock in Louisville after reports that a boat collided with a commercial vessel. Officials say seven people were on that boat and they found five who were all taken to the hospital. One of those people died and the two others, a man and a woman, are still missing. Several agencies, including the U.S. Coast Guard, are investigating. Tonight, police continue a search for a gunman who killed three people in Austin, Texas today. Officials are looking for 41 year old Stephen Broderick, who they say was a former deputy. Police say the bodies of three adults were found around midday today. They say they believe this was not a random shooting and that Broderick knew the victims. A shelter in place order for the northwest Austin area was lifted earlier today as police transitioned to a fugitive search for Broderick. Right now, our country ranks the 32nd highest for deaths from gun violence worldwide. For perspective, our death rate is eight times higher than Canada's and nearly 100 times higher than the UK. Some officials see it as a second pandemic affecting our country. And when you're hearing news of shootings, it can be tough on your mental health. Here's how you can manage the stress. First, practice self-care. If you're feeling distressed, health experts say you should find time to exercise, go to therapy, or even write down what you're feeling. Second, call the Disaster Distress Helpline. That number is 1-800-985-5990. It's a good number to call if you need immediate emotional support. And finally, limit your exposure. Doctors say it's important to be informed, but you should set boundaries on how much news you're consuming. Our goal is to never, ever have them with a stranger. 
That's the goal of a program in one Tennessee County called Safe Baby Court. The program aims to keep kids from entering the foster care system once they're removed from a home from Children's Services and instead focuses on reuniting them with their families. Cameron Taylor explains how it works. New tonight, half of American adults 18 and older have had at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. The CDC announced the milestone earlier today. To put that into perspective, that's nearly 130 million people. Right now, almost 84 million adults have been fully vaccinated. And as more people get vaccinated, we know you still have a lot of questions about the vaccine. Jay Wallace explains why you don't need to restart your vaccine if you get infected with COVID-19 between doses. New tonight, East Tennesseans had the chance to listen to a musical performance that incorporates the sounds of nature. The event was hosted by the Big Ears Festival. Visual storyteller Jerry Owens gives us an inside look at the unique experience. <laughs> Still ahead, one Kentucky couple is calling for change after a prank call from an unknown caller led police officers to their home. What law enforcement officers are saying now about swatting. And we could see a drop in temperatures later this week. The lows and the highs you can expect in your seven day forecast with Cassie. Straight from the heart of East Tennessee, this is 10 News Night Beat. Kentucky law enforcement officials are now pushing to make swatting a felony in the state after a Georgetown couple was unexpectedly bombarded by police officers who received a fake call about a homicide. Lee Searcy walks us through the terrifying night for the couple and their calls for action now. Right now, there is no anti swatting statute at the federal level. Officials have instead used other related laws to prosecute swatting suspects. Those include obstruction of justice, interstate threats or extortion or computer misuse. Turning back now to East Tennessee, it lost in the wonderful noises of the gongs and the, the windwood, <laughs> in, in windwood instruments that we heard uh, in yeah. that story earlier on in the show. It was a beautiful day uh, in East Tennessee today, Cassie. Yeah, the weather definitely cooperated for the Big Ears Festival for the dogwood tours of the gardens. I mean, all of it. The weather was perfect for any outdoor plans today. All right, Cassie, thank you so much. Earth Day is in four days on the 22nd, but that doesn't mean we can't start taking care of our planet now. This year's theme is Restore Our Earth. Here are some tips to help you get started in doing just that. All right, check this out. Yesterday, one of the planes performing in the Warbird Parade in Cocoa Beach, Florida, landed into the ocean. The plane had a mechanical issue, forcing the pilot to bring the plane down. Thankfully, rescue crews were able to respond immediately and said the pilot was fine and there were no injuries. And in other news today, America's oldest person has died. Hester Ford lived in North Carolina and died yesterday at the age of 116. Ford is leaving behind quite a legacy, including 12 children, 48 grandchildren, and 108 great grandchildren. In addition to the COVID pandemic, she also lived through the 1918 flu pandemic. Bounce back time for the Lady Vols. Coming up in sports, how Tennessee changed course against South Carolina in a major way, plus what to expect the orange and white game in less than a week. We've got a sweet update from our friends over at Appalachian Bear Rescue. Look at this little guy just ahead. See Hops Bear in action. Um, nom, 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 nom. All right, friends, here's something to make you smile. Appalachian Bear Rescue gave an update on its newest cub, Hops Bear. ABR says he's been doing well and eating a lot. You can definitely tell he's got a big appetite by looking at him. Uh, this video of him just enjoying his breakfast. Nom, 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 nom. Staff members say he now weighs over three pounds. That's a big boy right there. Oh, so cute. Adorable. Thank you all so much for watching. The news continues uh, at 427 later on. Have a good one.